Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Gary. Um, today we're going to be doing a, uh, a quick one with PF on FreeBSD with a Wi-Fi card. This was a suggestion from one of my watchers. Uh, so thank you for that. I'll put your name up on the screen because unfortunately I can't remember who you were. Which I won't say, by the way. That's just silly. Um, so today we're going to be doing a, a PF setup on FreeBSD with uh, two network cards, one Wi-Fi, one um, wired. Um, this was a suggestion from one of uh, one of my subscribers, so thank you for that. Put your name up on the screen so you know who you are. Um, so uh, we'll get on with this, shall we? Um, so as always, we'll um, we'll jump into our terminal. Here it is. So here you can see I'm logged in as root. Um, you need to be root to do this. Um, or you could use do, do as or sudo, but uh, might just as well be logged in as root, to be honest. So what we need to do first uh, is probably create our PF conf. So let's create that. It needs to be in etc. Well, it doesn't actually. You can put it in any particular place you want, um, but it might just as well be in in PF uh, in etc. So the block all will block everything. What we want is um, we want to block everything first, and then we want to pass in proto TCP to port whatever your SSH is on, so we don't get locked out. For this one, it's on port 22. Or you could just put in um, SSH, um, which is defined from the ETC services file, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll just do 22. I like to use port numbers. So that we've got that in, so we can allow SSH into this box. Everything else will be blocked. Um, similarly, everything at the moment outbound will be blocked as well once this firewall is started. So let's add in a few basic out rules. I'm not going to get into the formatting of this too much. Um, hopefully you'll be able to follow along. So there we go, we've got a few basic rules. Um, let's add a couple more in actually. So yeah, that should be okay for now. So what, what we're doing here is we're passing out the, the protocols TCP and UDP to ports 22, 53, 80, 123, 443, 110, and 143. So we've got 22, which is SSH, 53, which will be the UDP version. So that's DNS. So that allows our Name, domain name resolutions to work. Um, port 80, which is standard HTTP traffic. Uh, 123, which I believe is time NTP. Uh, 443, which is HTTPS, so any secure websites. Uh, 110 is POP and 143 is IMAP. Actually, let's put in 993 while we're at it. Okay, so that, that's a basic setup. So at the moment, we have everything is blocked on the way in except port 22. And everything out is blocked except for 22, 53, 80, 123, 443, 110, 143, and 993. So that's basic web browsing, um, SSH, DNS, and email basically. Yeah. Good. So let's also allow the passing out of ICMP. Oh, quick mistake there. Let's correct that, shall we? There we go. So we can ping out, but at the moment we can't ping in. 
So that is a, a basic um, workstation setup. Should we see if this works? What do you reckon? So firstly, let's enable PF. So sysrc PF enable equals yes. And we'll enable the logging as well. So there you go at the bottom, PF enable and PF log enable. That's good. Now, there's two ways of doing this. We can restart the, the server or workstation. Or we can which is going to kick us out of SSH. So let's not do it that way. Although if our rules are wrong, we're locked out anyway. So heart in mouth time, ready? So we'll do a, a shutdown minus R now. Bye bye. And we'll just wait for that to come back up. Here we go. So back in we go. Excellent stuff. Let's just, let's check a few things. So we can check some statistics of, of packet filter. There we go. Two current entries. So we've got two, two state tables. That's excellent. Brilliant stuff. Let's get rid of that. Um, so let's check that we can ping out, shall we? Let's try Google. There we go. We can still ping out. Brilliant stuff. Um, let's check that we can still reach the package repositories, which we can because that's HTTPS. Brilliant stuff. So let's confirm that we can't ping inbound, shall we? So let's try. Forty one. Well, would you look at that? We can't ping it. Get rid of that. We don't need that at the moment. What have we got? Time out, time out, time out. So let's confirm that, that it's because of that rule set, shall we? Let's stop that. Let's take a look at our PF config. So let's duplicate that bottom one. Pass in INET proto ICMP. I see MP type Yeah, looks right to me. And let's reload those rules. So Let's just check. Oh, would you look at that? So we can block pinging in. That's great. Which we might as well leave. Because we don't really want to reply to pings on this host. It doesn't need to. Let's reload that. So that's pretty much your, your basic rule set. Um, you, you can build on this, of course. Um, what I would probably do is not worry too much about separating um, your wired and wireless because essentially, you know, they're they're both connecting you to the network. I, I would just leave it all on on one. Uh, but if you've got a internal and external NICs, then maybe I would separate it. However, this isn't used in that manner, so. I, I'm not going to bother. What I would do, obviously, is protect your SSH port um, using 
public key authentication. In my previous video, I did that. Um, and I would probably do some uh, extra bits on on my SSH. So I'll do that now, actually. So if we go to, oh, if we go to here and go keep state max source con 15 max source con rate three one overload and bungle that into a table There we go. Okay. Let's, um, while I'm thinking about it, so we'll go back to here. Yeah. I'm going to do it like that so you can see the rest of it. Okay, let's make sure that works. That's worked. Excellent. So there we go. That's our uh, basic rule set. So let's add in a few extra bits. Um, just to make it a bit more. Um, so let's, uh, let's think about this. What else can we do? Oh, let's include the destination unreachable, shall we? Echo wreck. Okay. So what we need to do is, um, declare the table in the rule set as well. So oh, let's go up to the top and table brute force persist. And for that matter, let's define our ICMP types as well. Why not? So now we have policies in place to handle fragmentation. Let's just make sure. So we're just going to change the uh, ICMP one. Where have we got that? So let's change this to a dollar ICMP types. There we go. Let's have a quick look at our rule set. So at the moment, we've got um, two types of ICMP. So we're doing the unreachable and the echo requests, which is pings. We've got a table that is persistent. And that means it doesn't go away on uh, restarting of PF or restarting of this um, instance of FreeBSD, this workstation or server. Uh, we've got everything on the local loopback just skipped we don't need any rules on that that's all internal anyway scrubbing in all fragments and reassemble them on max mms which is the mtu of 1440 you should find that your mtu is 
probably set to 1500. Um, and then we're anti spoofing quick for WLAN 0. Then we're blocking all, and then we're passing in on the wireless LAN Proto TCP to port 22. Um, we're keeping state with uh, max source connections of 15 and a, a connection rate of 3 to 1. We've got an overload brute force table, which is flushed globally. Uh, passing in on BGE, blah, blah, it's exactly the same for um, both network cards. I, I said that we weren't going to do it and split it, but, you know, that's how you would do that. Uh, and then we're passing out the protos that I mentioned before. They are your basic internet protocols for web browsing and email, uh, DNS and time as well. And then we're passing out the ability to uh, ping. So that's a small basic rule set for PF on FreeBSD. Um, hopefully you found this quite useful. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, and as always, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. It really does mean the world to me. The, the the stuff that I've got going on at the moment, it, it, it's just such a boost. So thank you. You know, you may or may not know I have a um, a terminally ill disabled daughter um, who has cystic fibrosis, and she also has epilepsy. And a couple of nights ago, she had two quite large seizures. So to see you guys coming back and watching my videos in, in like this is just, it, it means so much to me. So thank you all. Um, so please, if, if, um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe and click on the bell icon to, to get the notifications for when my next videos are coming out. Um, really appreciate that. Um, guys, as always, thank you so much. Please keep coming back. Uh, I appreciate your support. It, like I said, it really does mean the world to me. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.